My name's Funk. Maybe you remember me, maybe you don't. I used to be synonymous with Team Fortress 2. It was all I played, all I talked about. I became who I am today playing this game. A YouTuber, an animator. Thank you, Archimedes. You got mail. Which is why three years ago, when I made my last video about it, I figured it wouldn't be the last. My plan was to release that, try some other stuff for a while, and then come back for the next major update. <coughs> Weeks became months, became years, and now here we are. I've watched myself go through all five stages of grief, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance, all over my favorite game, and at this point, I need some form of closure. So I'll just say it, I miss Team Fortress 2. That might be a little confusing, the player count's higher than ever, the game is still getting... hats. So what's there to miss? Well, what's there to miss about your grandfather with dementia? Who knows? Maybe I miss hearing his stories, holding his guns. Maybe I just miss that familiar tone. There was a culture to following TF2 that doesn't feel present anymore. In a time where games would release, sequel, die, and repeat ad infinitum, TF2 was the special case of a continuous update business model. They would make content, release it, then make more content. That might seem like a bog standard thing now, but back then no one knew how to monetize long term without a subscription model. It was a risky play, but it worked. They added hats, weapons, maps, big seasonal events, and you didn't even have to pay to experience most of it. Seeing these updates drop day one was like Christmas morning. Each year felt so distinct. 2012 to 13 was all about man versus machine, one of the best PvE games I've ever played. 2014 had all this cinematic lore stuff, both in and out of the game. 2015 had contracts, gargoyles, weapon skins. In 2016, it slowed down a bit. We got competitive in pastime. Valve's a little drunk here, but thanks for trying. For a while, a big summer update, a bigger Halloween event, and a year-end rebalance was just assumed to happen no matter what. They were the few constants to occur. You can pinpoint the exact moment on the update page where this changed, which is right here. Jungle Inferno, in hindsight, was good. I mean, they fumbled competitive at the finish line and smashed their goddamn noses in, but it was otherwise some primo content. What no one realized at the time was that this would be the penultimate effort by Valve to send the game off into an unannounced limbo of update hiatus. Past this point, summer updates became hat crates. Smith Smiths became hat crates. Halloween's all we get anymore, and even that is a fraction of the old days. One Halloween, you'd be playing prop hunt with a twink wizard. The next, you're casting spells with a bird head. The next, you're riding bumper cars through hell. You could never anticipate what was going to come next from Valve, and it made each year this grandiose hype thing up until they just stopped and repackaged the previous years together along with a few community maps. No more bosses, no more voice lines. Pay no attention to the top of this man's head. Do not look at this man's head. Go about your business. There is nothing unusual about this man's head. Halloween spells? I was lucky enough to stockpile a bunch of these over time, but they're effectively retired now. Haunted gifts got ruined by people botting them for profit, foreshadowing in its most ominous form. If that was the end of the story, it might not be so bad. But then the AI took over. It turns out exploiting a decade-old game despite its developers is way easier than my political science class made it out to be. <laughs> There was a point in time I couldn't even stream this game because someone would DDoS every server I joined. Valve has tried fixing these issues through communal changes to voting and text chat, but just like my political science class taught me, you can vote the bad people out, but that won't stop them from showing up again. Oh great monkey's paw, I doth truly miss man versus machine. Won't you grant me a new MBM experience to enjoy? <laughs> You. The last few years of my life have been spent chasing that high I got from TF2 updates, but to this day nothing comes anywhere close to the winter of 2012, fall of 2013, summer of 2016. I miss wondering what crazy new additions would come to the game. The new short circuit going from a taser to a key blast, the soda popper getting a million jumps. They'd make these huge changes and then for two weeks straight every server would be a mirror match of everyone trying out the changes. It was like getting brand new items. The loose cannon to this day is the most fun weapon in any video game ever. I don't know about y'all, but I'm feeling pretty Guitar solo. Fuck! It's what made people so excited to get new items, to play the game in a new way. I miss getting excited for SFM movies, comic releases. The TF team could sneeze on me and I would wear their brown starfish like a hockey mask. No questions asked, thank you very much. 
These major content patches ate up thousands of hours of my life, countless dollars on MVM tickets, so many other personal milestones, crafting a 33 tux, finding my first Australian, participating in the Saxy Awards, trading up to my first unusual. I spent my life from 15 to 19 playing religiously. Now I'm an old man going on 25, and God damn it, I'm still obsessed with it. The marching clock of time terrifies me for many reasons, but one of them is having to see this game limp along, not in grace, but rather despondently ambivalent to how a its development has become. No more Christmas rebalances, no more experimental game modes, and I know it's not over. I know the game will probably eventually get big updates, but that is now an outlier to the static, unchanging, undying status quo. I love TF2, and I miss it.